Good morning, students. This is uh, Professor Vipul Shah here. I'll be coaching you all chemistry. And to start with chemistry, just let me brief up something about it. Chemistry is mainly made up of three components. One is what we have as physical chemistry, which is about mole concept, the different laws, thermodynamics, electrochemistry, and all what we'll see, mainly numerical part. That's physical chemistry. Second, we have inorganic chemistry. That is about the periodic table, what you'll have learned, the different blocks, S block, P block, alkali metals, alkaline metals, DNF block, and all that. So the periodic table is mainly the inorganic chemistry. And third, we have the organic chemistry, which is the chemistry of carbon compounds. So today, we're going to start with chemistry of carbon compounds, that's organic chemistry. And today, we will just do general characteristics of organic chemistry. Okay. Now, this being my first class, few rules about my lectures. I would like to be brief, you know, brief to everybody. Please feel free. You are here to gain knowledge and to excel in your respective fields, either to do engineering or to do medicine. And this path ahead is going to be for the next two years. Trust me, it's going to be amazing and we are really going to enjoy it. Just one suggestion, keep a rough book with you and a pen ready so you can jot down points and any questions coming in your mind, just jot it down. So whenever we have the discussions, you can ask me. Okay. All right. Let's start here. Here we go then. First, we'll talk about the general characteristics, what we have of organic compounds. Okay. What are the general characteristics? Let's discuss each one one by one. First one, composition. What's composition? What's exactly, you know, organic chemistry? Chemistry of carbon compounds. Compounds which contain carbon and along with carbon, there are, there are other elements where carbon will share electrons with. You might have heard the word covalent bonding, sharing of electrons. So carbon sharing electrons with hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, phosphorus, halogen, n number of compounds is clear. That's what we have. So the composition, carbon is present throughout along with other elements. That's the first point. Second, we have the type of linkage. Now in the type of linkage, when I'm talking over here, so when I'm talking about the type of linkage over there, I just use that word covalent bonds. Have a look at the slide, please. What exactly is the meaning of this word covalent bonds? Covalent bond is a bond formed due to sharing of electrons. So when two atoms, they share electrons, then that bond is a covalent bond. And this bond is precisely between two non-metals. So two non-metals, they generally share electrons. Organic compounds, chemistry, when we are talking, all carbon compounds, they generally will form covalent bonds. That's one feature. Then, next we have, we'll talk how does it form covalent bonds. Okay, let's understand. Carbon, we all know, atomic number is 6. The electronic configuration you'll have learned in school, 2,4. What's the logic of 2,4? First shell capacity, 2 electrons. Second shell capacity, 8 electrons. How do we know? Just in this formula, number of electrons in any shell is 2 into n square. Number of electrons in any shell is 2 into n square. What is n? The shell number or we also call it as the orbit number. So when the outermost shell is 1, 2 into 1 square, that's 2 electrons. Outermost shell is 2. 2 into 2 square, so it's basically 2 into 4, that is 8. So carbon is 2 comma 4, meaning first shell is 2 electrons, second shell is 4 electrons. What is the capacity of the second shell? 8 electrons. So 8 minus 4, it requires 4 electrons to complete its octet. What is the logic of this word octet? Octet comes from the word, what we're going to do a little later, that is all inert gases except helium all have eight electrons in the outermost shell. So if any element by gaining sharing of electrons have eight electrons in their outermost shell, then they will be more stable and they will behave like the inert gases. This was the old concept what was known. That's why the stability is with respect to eight octet. Coming back to carbon, carbon has four electrons in, the, in, in its second shell needs four electrons so its valency is four what's valency it's the combining capacity of an element 
number of electrons gained, lost or shared in order to have its outermost shell complete. That is what we call as valency. So carbon valency is 4, it can form 4 bonds. Alright, that's one. So that's the linkage part, they form covalent bonds and it can form 4 of them. Then, the next point important due to covalent bonding, they do not ionize when dissolved in water. What's the logic? What's the meaning of this word ionize? Ionize means formation of ions. Now, covalent bonds generally do not break in water to form ions. Like, like we might have all heard about, say, for example, salt, NaCl. NaCl in water will give Na plus plus chloride ions. But if I dissolve methane in water, will it give any ions? No, it will not give. Why like this? Because of covalent bonds. As I rightly said, covalent bond is a bond between two non-metals. So hence, there is no probability or less probability of charges to develop. So as there is less probability of charges to develop, they will not ionize in water. Okay, that's the part. That's one. Then, next, a very important feature to talk, catenation. You might have heard this word. If no, then listen carefully. This is also one of the important property. What is catenation? Carbon atom has a unique phenomenon of forming long chains of compound either in a straight chain or in a branch manner with another carbon atoms. So it's also called self-linkage property. Have a look at the slide, please. So in short, if I have to put this word, what's the meaning of this word? Self-linkage property. Carbon atom forming long chains, either in a long continuous manner or in a branched manner. Is this clear? Then that's called as catenation property. Now an important point, please pen it down somewhere. Why does carbon show catenation? See, please understand one thing, everyone. It's very important, do not accept anything. Okay, you're supposed to ask questions because at competitive examinations, it's the knowledge that will help you. So, it's, so carbon shows catenation, that is a fact. But why shows catenation? That's the point to be at. So please jot it down somewhere. Why it shows? One, because of its small size. And second, unique strength of carbon-carbon bonds. So carbon to carbon, the single covalent bond will be very strong. And second is size is small. Carbon -car atomic size is smaller. So due to smaller size and a unique strength of the CC bonds, carbon shows catalyst. Okay? One. Then, Next, an important phenomenon, isomerism. Iso means similar. Mer means parts. Compounds made up of similar parts. You might have heard the word. What are isomers? Two or more compounds have the same molecular formula, but they have different structural formula. Then, they are said to be isomers of each other. That phenomenon is called isomerism. That's what we see. We all know alkanes ka general formula, CnH2 and plus 2. So if I put N is equal to 4, it becomes C4H10. So if it is C4H10, that's basically, if you remember, the alkanes, how do we number? The 10 alkanes are at the 10 tips of your fingers. Methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. So if I take N is equal to 4, that's but, butane. So CnH2n plus 2. Put n is equal to 4. C4H10. C4H10 can be written in two ways. Have a look at this. One is n-butane. Meaning of the word n, this small n stands for normal. Normal means in a continuous chain without branching. That's called n, normal. And second we have a compound isobutane. Iso, similar. Let's understand what is the similarity part. Okay, see this now. Now to explain that, suppose I take n butane. Draw four. Please draw in your books. Four carbon atoms in a continuous chain. C single bond. C single bond. C single bond. C. Okay. Now the end carbon. Please look at the. Please look over here. Please. I'm numbering them. That's one. That's two. That's three. And that's. Okay, now the first carbon, how many valencies satisfied? Just look at the slide, please. One with one single bond is with this carbon. So definitely to balance, there has to be three hydrogen. 
Okay, so one of the single bond with carbon and three with the hydrogen. That's our four. These are hydrocarbons, compounds made up of only carbon and hydrogen. So understand the concept of valency work. Now come to the second carbon, that is this one. Second one, how many valencies are satisfied with carbon? Two. Look at please. One with this carbon and one with this carbon. So how many done? Two are done. So how many short? Two short. So that's the two hydrogen. That's what you rightly see. Okay. Come to the next one, third carbon. How many are satisfied with other carbon? Again, two. One with the fourth carbon, one with the second carbon. So two valencies done. So again, two short. Two hydrogen. And last one, the single carbon. How many are satisfied? So this fourth has only one satisfied with one carbon. So remaining will be three over here. Okay. So if you add up all, C4, three and three, six, plus two, plus two. So 10. So C4, H10. Okay. And look at this. What's the meaning of the word ISO? ISO means similar. Now let's put up. What's the, how do you put up ISO? One of the carbon atom is branched and the branched carbon atom is attached to two similar methyl groups. What's a methyl group? One H short of methane. Methane is CH4. So if you remove one H, what will we get? CH3. So look here. I'm talking about this one. This branch carbon. This is actually if there are four, then there will be three methyl. But definition of ISO is branch carbon is attached to two methyl. You can take any one. I'm taking this one and this one. I could have taken this one also. Doesn't matter. Okay. Here, if you satisfy the valencies, now let's put up the numbers again. What we did so, this is one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So, single bond one shared with only one, and one carbon, so three valencies, so one plus three, four. The center one sharing three single bonds with three carbon and one with the H, so that's three plus one, four. This single carbon sharing only one, so three. And the last fourth carbon also sharing only one with the carbon, so three with the hydrogen. This also, if you add up, it is C4H10. All right, so isomers, same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Okay, this is also one feature. Then, next we have a very important point to talk. Yes. That's called polymerization. People chemistry, many times, the words have the answer. Let's understand. Poly means many. Mer means parts, compound made up of many parts where a single molecule is called monomer. Mono means one, mer means part, so made up of one part. Many monomers, when they either undergo addition or they undergo condensation to form a long chain of a compound where the product is called polymer and the process is called polymerization. That's what it is. Have a look at the slide, please. It says, large number of small molecules, that's called monomer, matlab single molecule. So many molecules either undergo addition or they undergo condensation to form a long chain of a compound called polymer and the process is polymerization. I've given the structures of three of the polymers. Don't worry, you don't have to remember any of them. Just the names right now. But you know all of them. All of them we are using in our day-to-day -day lives. Just see this part, what I'm trying to talk. First one, polythene, plastic bags. Okay, ethene, CH2, double bond CH2. So the double bond breaks. So what is a monomer? One molecule of ethene, CH2, double bond CH2. This is a monomer. Many molecules of ethene, if they add, what's going to happen? The double bond, is this clear? The double bond breaks between the two carbon, becomes a single bond. And many units will attach together. That's what you rightly see the structure here. All are CH2, 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 depending upon how many you add. So just see here, please. Look at the slide. This is one ethene. Then that's the second ethene. That's the third. That's the fourth. And you go on adding. And this is n times, meaning a long chain depending on the thickness. Like, for example, you go to a vegetable vendor and we buy some vegetables. A plastic bag he gives that quality. Is this clear? And you go to a supermarket and you buy something like a, you know, I can say like some clothes or something and the type of bag we give you, the strength it has. All right. So depending upon N, we will have the strength of the plastic. That's polythene. Second one, anybody knows this? This compound? In fact, to tell you, everybody knows about it. Okay. It is there in all our buildings. Look at this compound. This is called PVC. 
the full form polyvinyl chloride the gray pipes in the building the sanitation pipes which goes out of the bathroom totally the entire buildings for all the buildings those gray color pipes are called pvc pipes pvc p for poly v for vinyl c for chloride polyvinyl chloride where who's the monomer vinyl chloride what is the structure of vinyl chloride that's what you see it is ch2 here there will be a double bond between the two what has been shown as a single bond because it's broken so this is ch2 double bond ch and cm that's called vinyl chloride many will add the double bond breaks and that's the two valencies which are there and this is n times so a long chain is formed that's basically the sanitation pipes what we call as pvc polyvinyl chloride and look at this one we are using it daily but still we don't know i'm sure nobody knows about it polystyrene poly again is many sterene is a trade name people like for example i'll tell you uh, i hope everybody knows this uh, you can ask mom also uh, nail polish remover that's acetone okay now you go to a chemist shop and tell him you know give me a bottle of dimethyl ketone which is the common name of the compound he will say there is no chemical as such what i am trying to talk at chemistry there are many compounds which have the common names they are iupac names they also have trade names by which they are traded in the market okay so sterene is the trade name of the compound what we have okay the compound actually is nothing but vinyl benzene once again it is ch2 here, here what i am showing this technically is a double bond so ch2 double bond ch and then you have the at close part what you see a six membered with the ring that's called the benzene ring i'm going to discuss this in the next class okay what is benzene just right now understand the structure polystyrene where the double bond what i've shown will break and the two valencies will come on the two sides where do we i said we use this daily where is polystyrene people the buckets at home the bathing buckets which can store around you know which can you know lift around something like you know 10 15 20 liters of water inside all right so that those heavy the heavy hard plastic buckets that's basically polystyrene or the hard plastic toys all right what we have or what we have played with they are made up of polystyrene so all these are polymeric compounds what we have in our day to day life that's polymers okay next melting and boiling points now organic compounds is observed they have generally low melting and boiling points the question comes why do they have low melting and boiling point what is the reason i want everybody please pen it down listen to this first when you write uh organic compounds i told you they generally form covalent bonds then why do they have low melting and boiling points because of weak intermolecular forces of attraction now what is this weak intermolecular force of attraction okay let's take it very simple two methane molecules now in one methane one carbon is bonded to four hydrogen carbon can form four covalent bonds because its valency is four another methane also same way carbon will form four bonds with four hydrogen so between the carbon and hydrogen in a molecule there are covalent bonds but if i get two methane molecules close to each other what type of linkage is between the two it is just attraction right there can't be any bond between the two methane so what attraction is that that's the weakest force called Van der Waals force of attraction. All right, that's called the intermolecular forces. So as these intermolecular force of attraction, Van der Waals forces. That's the name of the chemist who has found it. The weakest force responsible for holding two atoms or two molecules together. In case of methane, it is the two molecules that it will hold together, or the attraction between the two molecules. So as this attraction is weak, we say organic compounds will have. low melting and boiling point so please pen this down somewhere organic compounds have low mp and pp because of weak intermolecular force of attraction then a very important prominent concept odor most of the organic compounds they possess characteristic odor smell okay now all compounds don't have but specific compounds have have a look at this esters esters have fruity smell now you have Sisters at home or your friends, especially girls, if you have seen the deos they use, they are either the flowery ones or they are the fruity ones. Okay, so 
So all those are esters and in fact esters are also used as flavors. They are some of the what we can call as the food flavors are also there. Like for example, the rose syrup we get in the market, okay, to quench our thirst and all. What do you think? They take a rose, they properly, you know, you know what I can say, they squeeze it to remove the rose oil or something over there and from there they make. No, it's a flavoring agent. That's an ester. Okay, so when it's coming on the tongue, it is giving me the same taste of a particular flower or a fruit that way. Second, one more example, amines. Amines have fishy odors. So if I take an amine, amines basically the groups which has, you know, they are the nitrogen containing compounds. Amino, amino and the tertiary nitrogen atom. We will see that in the nomenclature of amines. So if I keep an amine, you know, in a 100 ml flask on the table, it will be like as if, you know, a raw fish is kept on a table. That type of smell we will get. That's the odor. But mind you, all organic compounds don't have odor. Some of them have. So that's a feature to it. Very important point. Functional groups. Now there are something like 17 to 18 functional groups. I am sure in school you have heard. If not, listen. Functional group like halogen, Cl, Br, I, what we call as haloalkanes. Functional groups OH attached to the aliphatic chain, that's the open chain, that's called alcohols. OH attached to the benzene ring, that's called phenols. Then CHO group, that's the aldehyde group. COOH group, that's called the carboxylic acid group. C double bond, that's called the ketonic group or the oxo group. Like that, there are many cyanides, isocyanides, we're going to talk all. Now, what are these functional groups? Functional group is either an atom or a group of atom which imparts peculiar chemical properties to that compound. So, depending on the functional group, the organic compound will have that type of property. Okay. So that's what it says. And here, I have given some examples. Look at that. COH, that's carboxylic acids. CHO, that's called aldehyde. And each one have different names in the IUPAC. Okay. Like carboxylic acids are called alkanoic acids. We'll be doing that. CHO is aldehyde. That's called alkanal. OH group is of two types. Attached to the aliphatic chain. That's the open chain. That's alcoholic OH. That's called alcohols. What we call in the IUPAC as alkanol. Or it's attached to the benzene ring. And it's called a phenolic OH. That's called benzenol. All these are the names which are going to come ahead. I'm just giving you ideas. If you have not heard. There are something like, as again, I'm repeating, 17 to 18 groups which impart different properties to the compounds. So that's the functional group part. A very important feature, combustibility. What is combustibility? Combustion. What is combustion? Burning with excess of oxygen. Now, let's say organic compounds, let's say the hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes and alkynes, made up of only carbon and hydrogen. How do I define what is combustion? Organic compound burns with excess of oxygen to form its respective oxides. Now it's a hydrocarbon with only carbon and hydrogen. So oxide of carbon is carbon dioxide. Oxide of hydrogen is water. That's how it is. And all combustion reactions are exothermic reaction. Catch this word. Exo means out. Thermic, therm, heat. Energy is given out to the surroundings. That's called exothermic reaction. I'll talk with an example. Have a look at it. It's easy to frame these equations also. Suppose I take methane. Most important, never balance the reactant. Whatever is my reactant, never balance it. Like methane. It should be always one mole. That is a trick. It burns with O2. So don't write this to just write O2. Oxide of carbon, CO2. Oxide of hydrogen, water. How many carbon in the methane? One. So this is one CO2. Just see here what I'm highlighting. Here there are how many hydrogen? Four atoms of hydrogen. So this will be that's why 2H2O. So four atoms. Okay. Now once carbon and hydrogen are balanced by keeping the reactant as one mole, now balance oxygen. Look at this. Two water, so two and CO2 ka two. So two plus two, four. That's why the word 2O2. But everybody how they catches okay never balance the reactant it's always one mole burning with excess of oxygen to form its oxides you may try one more in your book come on 
write down C2H6, that's ethane. All right. C2H6 plus O2. Now, oxide of carbon, CO2. Oxide of hydrogen, water. A balance the reaction, write down I'm saying. C2H6 plus O2 gives, put an arrow, CO2 plus water. Okay. Important. Don't balance C2H6. That's one mole only. Now, looking at it, balance the products. C2. So, two times carbon dioxide. H6. Matlab, three times water. Because hydrogen is diatomic. So, three into two, six. So, now you have two CO2, three water. So, carbon and oxygen done. Now, come to hydrogen. Two CO2. So, two into two, four oxygen. Three water. Matlab, three oxygen. Four plus three, seven. How do I write seven? Because O2 is diatomic. Very easy. 7 by 2 or 2. What is 7 by 2? 3.5. And 3.5 or 2, meaning 3.5 into 2. What is 3.5 into 2? 7. Got it? I repeat. See how the reaction is now. C2H6 plus 7 by 2 O2 gives 2 times CO2 plus 3 times but the whole part of this is okay so that's the reaction what we call as combustion burning with excess of oxygen to form its oxide. then next feature for organic compounds homologous series i'm sure everybody's heard this word what's the meaning of this word homologous series homologous comes from the word homo homo means similar logos a group of compounds which follows the same general formula. So, if I take the general formula, Cn, H2n plus 2, and I start putting N, N is 1, methane, N is 2, ethane. Now, methane and ethane, if you compare the difference between the two, methane, what is the mass? Carbon is 60, carbon is 12, sorry, hydrogen is 4. So, there are 4 atoms, so 12 plus 4, 16, 16 is the molar mass. If I take ethane, C2H6, Carbon is 12, so 12 into 2, 24. H6, 1 into 6, so 24 plus 6, 30. Methane, the molar mass was 16. Ethane is 30. 30 minus 16, difference of 14. Okay, take one more. If you take ethane and propane also, okay, ethane was 30, come to propane. C3, H8, so 12 into 3, 36. H8, hydrogen is molar mass, atomic mass is 1. So, 1 into 8, 8. So, we have 36 plus 8. It's going to be 44. Take the difference. 44 minus 30, 14. So, that's what we call homologous series. Where every successive member, successive one after the other. Like methane ke baad ethane, ethane ke baad propane. Every successive member in any group of compounds will always differ by a mass of 14 units. And what is that 14? CH2. Carbon ka mass 12. Hydrogen is 2. So H2. So 12 plus 2. 14. That's what we call as the. And this group CH2 is called the methylene group. That's what we call. And this methylene group has a mass of 14 units. Everybody clear now how 14? CH2. Carbon atomic mass 12. Hydrogen is 1. So there are 2 atoms. So 1 into 2. 12 plus 2. Okay, that's the feature then, homologous series. Then, next point, electrical conductivity. Now, what is conductivity? Okay, if I take a salt, like NaCl, I dissolve in water. It's going to give ions, Na plus and Cl minus. These ions, is this clear? Will conduct electricity. Okay, so if I pass a particular voltage, then we will have electricity that will be conducted. It says organic compounds are poor or bad conductors of heat and electricity. Why are they poor conductors? Because one, we discussed covalent compounds don't ionize in water or they ionize to a very less extent. So if they ionize to a very less extent, the ions available, free ions available are less or negligible. So if there are negligible ions, we say they will have poor and if they don't ionize, they are bad conductors of heat and electricity. So, remember the logic, it's due to availability of ions. Covalent bonds do not ionize in water, so the free ions are less. That's why organic compounds are, they are bad or poor conductors. Then, 
Next comes people, a point of solubility, what we talk. This is the last point to discuss, that's the solubility of organic compounds. They are generally insoluble in water, I told you. But they are soluble in organic solvents like ether, alcohol, benzene. What is the logic for this solubility? The principle is this, like dissolves like. What do you mean by like dissolves like? Okay, I'll give an example again. NaCl salt has charges, Na plus Cl minus, plus minus. Water also has charges, HOH, H partial positive and OH partial negative. So like dissolves like. Water has charges. So salts which have charges will be soluble in water. Got the logic? Like dissolves like. Salts which have charges will be soluble in water which also has charges. Second, if I take methane, does methane have charge? No charge. So methane is not soluble in water but it will be soluble in ether, alcohol, benzene because they don't have a charge. That's why we say principle of solubility for any compound is like dissolves. Okay, so these are some of the terms what we have with respect to the general characteristics of organic compounds and with respect to this part, alright, what we can say here is, okay, now in the next feature, we are going to talk about nothing but with this properties, we are going to go into the concepts of the nomenclature of all organic compounds. My suggestion to all, I am going to, I am going to give these slides also to you separately. Please go through the slides, all right, and whatever points you have or the doubts, please pen it down. We'll be discussing it because one or two lectures, then I'll keep a live lecture for you while we discuss. And whatever question comes in your mind, please pen it down. We'll discuss it all. Okay. I hope you'll have liked it. This was the first basic part what we had. That was just the principles or the, what are the features of organic compounds. Then we'll go into the next class onwards. We will go into the variety of what are the different types of compounds. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.